Hello, darlings. You've all heard of Marilyn Monroe. Welcome back, darlings. I'm TV host, entertainment journalist, Cognac Wella Lane, and I have a very special guest today. She is an actress. Her name is Janelle Tana. And Janelle Tana was recommended to me by Yvonne Camacho, who is a publicist. And Janelle, tell my audience how you met Yvonne Camacho. Um, yes, Yvonne is really wonderful. And I initially met her through other contacts. I was actually um, doing runway shows and attending events, and I met her through Avadora and other people. So I saw her on the scene, you know, like I said, a lot of events, runway shows that I had walked. And then she invited me to walk in her models for philanthropy um, during the um, Carol Galvin Foundation New York Fashion Week. Um, and we just really hit it off. She's a wonderful human being. Uh, she's a very hard worker. She's also very talented and she does really, really, um, she really pushes the envelope for her clients, her friends, for everybody. So I'm very appreciative. Yeah, I, I'm sure you are. And she is a, it, she's an inspiration to all of us, how hard she works. And she's so dedicated to what she's doing. So now I'm right. going to tell my audience a little bit about you before we get into some of these questions. Are you ready? Sure. Okay. I'm ready. Okay, Janelle uh, Tana is a multi-award winning actress recognized both nationally and internationally for independent film work at various film festivals around the globe as an award winning producer. She's also a very, very talented actress. She received acting training in the method at the Lee Strasberg Theater, just like Marilyn Monroe and Film Institute, as well as the Meisen Technique with James Brill of Neighborhood Playhouse. She has a film released, Sienna's Choice, on Amazon Prime, now as well as the leading actress in the film Intervention with Julia Silverman on the film festival circuit. She's also been on several independent series and has just completed two acting projects, as well as having several upcoming pending the pandemic. She has received over 30 acting wins and nominations at various film festivals, as well as a handful of wins and nominations for writing and producing featured on Forbes.com. Uh, now tell my audience, what inspired you to be an actress? Yeah, I think um, I, I was born an actress. You know, I really believe that uh, it was in my soul. Um, and growing up, I always, I put on small productions for family and friends, our next door neighbors who were very close to us, um, at the time, you know, in the olden days had a video camera, a camcorder. So we would make short films and I would, it was more guerrilla filmmaking. Like we just put it together and make the script right there. And I would always want to, you know, be the lead or some, you know, juicy role. And, you know, we, we, we would do that. We put together short films. And then, um, you know, I was a gymnast always, uh, also growing up, so my attention was really focused there. I ended up, um, you know, I, I also um, really love science and really love the human condition, which goes along, uh, you know, how I approach my characters in the same way I approach humanity. And um, so I actually ended up going to medical school. I'm also a doctor. I and, saw uh, that. Now, that's a, yeah. that leads me to my next question, which is, you are an occasional model, and you've walked the runways in New York City and Paris, and you're a cover girl, and you're also a medical doctor. Now, how interesting is that, that you're a medical doctor? Tell us how the story, how you transitioned from a doctor into the world of show business. Yeah, so I, um, I mean, like, yeah, acting was always in my soul, but also empathy, so I, um, I initially, um, after, well, during medical school, I really wanted to go into neurosurgery. I had a very um, focused mind for it. You know, I, I really, um, I love the brain. So I started in neurosurgery um, out of medical school and it was very intense. Um, it's a lot of hours. Um, it's very, uh, you know, life is always on the line. 
And, um, but, but, but I you know, got a lot of great lessons and, and met a lot of great people. Um, but that being said, during that time, you know, I always had that kind of what if with acting. So I um, actually ended up, there was a community theater about 30 or 40 minutes away from my program. And on the occasional off day, I would go and do adult acting classes and monologues and scenes. Um, it was there, my, my, my teacher there said, you know, I, I think you would be a method actor just based on how you talk about preparing for characters and what you would do. Interesting. My famous, uh, favorite actors, I like to read about how they would prepare, how they pick the character. But then when it happening, I was coming back to New York and I had some interviews. In that time, I thought, okay, well, if I'm going away from neurosurgery and coming back to the East Coast, um, I think I'm going to have a little more time. So I want to get more into acting like I always wanted to. So on a whim, I put together an application for Lee Strauss for an interview. I got accepted the next day. And then I was trying to One was because my first son, Hershey, they said he was too big to put under the seat and I didn't want to check him. So after several hours, I got on another plane and engine malfunctions. I had to deplane. So I said to myself, you know what? Just as a sign. So I ended up um, training at the Lee Strasberg Institute. A playhouse at James. And um, that's kind of what happened. And I got, I felt, you know, my soul was really at home when I'm in acting and preparing characters. Along with that, during the time I was in um, doing any film and training, I also started doing some um, psychiatric research. Um, and yeah, you're a psychologist. Am I right about a psychologist or a psychiatrist? You're a psychologist, yeah. not a psychiatrist. Psychiatry. Psychiatry. Oh, psychiatrist. So, yeah. Okay. I'm an MD, so I'm a psychiatry. So I'm actually, um, so I'm actually my last part of my program. So I'm one of the chief residents right now. But we work closely with the psychologist, but, um, you know, we, I, I do a P, I did a year of fellowship in psychoanalysis last year. Um, but we also prescribe medication. So we prescribe medication, we use therapy. You know, every psychiatrist is different. Um, but that's kind of my story. So, um, yeah, so basically, you know, I used to always think of them, oh, this or that, but they're all really a part of me. And I think that, um, like I said, how I view humanity or people is how I view my characters. Like what happened to this person? How can I put myself in their shoes? You know, I, what would have happened to me to make me feel that way, to kind of feel what somebody else is feeling? So, so that's it. That's my story. And, um, well, that's what yeah. makes you, that's what makes you a very good actress, actually. Thank you. Because you, you get into your character and that's like the method acting. And that's what really makes you, puts you above other actors in your, in your way of uh, acting out the character that you are portraying. Now, um, in addition, tell my audience uh, what you consider to be your biggest break in show business? Yeah, I feel like, um, you know, when I think about it, um, you know, I, I always feel like a newbie because I haven't been, you know, I, I didn't start, quote, you know, um, acting formally, let's say, when I was really young. You know, I started just, like I said, when I came back to New York. Um, so I, I feel like I still am, you know, working towards my, quote, break. But I also feel like, you know, it's the journey. I don't think there's going to be one specific thing. I think every project that I do kind of builds on the next. And yeah, on the next. that's true. That's you know? true. In show business, it's always an ongoing journey. In show business, it's always something yeah. that's just ongoing. So now, in addition to your acting. It's like everything you do, yeah. Everything you do, it just evolves into more and more. And it grows you as a person. And right. it grows you as um, so uh, it grows you as a person, it grows you as an actor. Now, in addition to acting, as I mentioned before, you are also a producer. What do you enjoy more, acting in a film or being behind the scenes of a film? 
I'm definitely acting. So I'm definitely mostly an actor. However, um, you know, I have created a few films myself um, with an amazing team. I feel like when I have a story that needs to be told, I will do my best to, you know, get people that um, I know contribute a lot in their, th you know, I I'm only one person. So I want to see what other people, how they view it how the vision comes out across in their mind because I want it to reach many people. So when I produce, I tend to be involved in things that are um, social, kind of uh, social issues, like um, important social, I mean, I guess every social issue is important, but social issues that strike me as something um, that I want to be involved in or tell. So um, when I produce, like with Sienna's Choice, that's about end of yeah, life care. Yeah, Sienna's Choice is probably mm -hmm. like one of the biggest things you've done. Tell my audience about the story about Sienna's Choice. What's the synopsis of the film? So Sienna's Choice um, actually is one of my first films. That was the first film I created. And um, so basically it is about a young woman who really seems to have her life ahead of her. Um, you know, she just graduated law school and she was newly married she has a lot of things that she's looking forward to and um, she starts to have subtle symptoms um that are uh, more or less uh, you could say brushed off or just not taken as seriously because she seems otherwise healthy and she ends up without giving it away has a potentially left life-threatening diagnosis so what it really looks at and you know different people have gotten different things out of the film i right. think um from an actor, I mean, it was a very deep role, very uh, multi-layered, you know, very dark and happy places, both. And um, it looks at kind of what a human could go through. But another perspective is it looks at who makes decisions for someone when they can't speak for themselves any longer, when they're not able to make those decisions. So it looks at, um, you know, those kind of things, like the conversations that a lot of people have had with their loved ones or should have. So it brings up a lot of that. Other people tell me, you know, the family dynamic or the dynamic between the physicians. Um, so you really see, um, really it's both, about- You see both sides of the picture. Mm -hmm. You see and a lot of different things. Yeah, and plus uh, when people see this movie, they probably say, well, you know, if this should happen to me, maybe I should do what this woman is doing in the film. Maybe I should do that. It's kind of like inspirational in the sense that, well, this woman is going, this character in the film is going through this. Maybe I should think about that. That could happen to me. God forbid. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of different people, um, like I said, at various festivals, people would come up to me and share their experiences with watching the film. And yeah, different people were touched for different now, reasons. I, I noticed, I noticed you had a ballerina. I watched the trailer. I saw the ballerina. Oh, yeah. What's the emphasis of this ballerina in the film? So the ballerina is me. So that's, that's right. me. And that's Sienna. Um, so she, in addition to being a new lawyer, she hasn't taken the bar yet, but she just graduated. Um, in addition to that, she is like there and then she would teach she was a ballet teacher so um that's a part of who she is sort of yeah sort of how like gymnastics will always be a part of me it was that thing for her I and see. she notices things she notices things like you know as she's having symptoms she can't get as high on her toes she has you know her leg feels a little ah, bit wobbly interesting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah she's starting to see wait a minute why yeah. can't i reach that step or that yeah can't, yeah i see i see so that's what makes her awakens her to the illness that she has now getting into this other role tell us about your film intervention which received the audience choice award award tell us about that film so intervention um i did not create the film but i um i'm one of the co-producers i came on after um julia silverman actually thought up this film and then got Dion um, to come to the writing and, and Linda who directed Sienna's Choice also directed Intervention. So Julia played my mom in Sienna's Choice. So she thought when uh, she, she tells me, I didn't think of anyone else who could play this role, you know, go to these places than you. So she's like, 
she she gave me the role, which I'm very grateful for. I'll always be so grateful to Julia. Um, and so Amy, my character, it she, you know, she um, is really, really in a dark place. She really um, hits rock bottom, you could say. Um, she's dealing with a lot of devastation, but at the same time. There are rays of hope in unusual places, if you see the film, um, that'll, that might allow her to turn things around or, you know, make that impossible decision become possible. So the film looks at, from a story perspective, the film looks at addiction and mental health issues, not just depression. Um, it looks very heavily at major depressive disorder, but also Alzheimer's. So you'll see in the story, uh, Julia's, Julia's character, who's my mom, you'll see how Alzheimer's can affect someone. And it's also- Oh yes, um, oh yes. Well, I, you know, I interviewed Princess Yasmin Aga Khan, the daughter of Rita Hayworth. And she told me about her, her experience with her mother. It was quite devastating. Alzheimer's is a horrible disease and you die from it because the disease destroys your brain. And it's so, it's so sad because she was such a beautiful actress, Rita Hayward. But getting on with my questions, you recently filmed a screen role in Bobcat Moretti, uh, Bobcat Moretti, directed by Rob Margolis, starring Tim Robuto, Vivica Fox, who I've interviewed, Tara Manning, another great star, and uh, Sally Kirkland, that's amazing and will be starring in a currently unnamed project, which also is directed by Rob Margolis. Now tell my audience about your experience in working with such a well-known director. Rob Margolis, is a, he's a huge director. Yeah. What was that so, like, um, that I, experience? I've known him for a, a, a bit now. Um, I actually met him through friends and also through a, um, like a cat like a director workshop um right. this was a while ago and you know he really liked my work you do a scene for them you do a scene for the director they watch it they you know give you feedback um and we just kept in touch um you know and my role in bobcat is small but it was so much fun to be on that set um you know yeah uh, they, you have big everyone, star you yeah, have big stars was, in that film yeah. Th those are everyone pretty big actors lovely. yeah they're all amazing i personally got to see, you know, Vivica, because she was in the same, the, the same days in the same scenes, but um, she's a true professional. I mean, yes. just watching her, watching her work is amazing. You know, she's definitely someone love to look her. up to. I love her. You know, did you get to chat with her and talk to her at all? Did you? A you little bit. To... A little I, bit. You know, I met you know... her at the International Emmy Awards, and this mm. was so many years ago when I met her. It's like probably oh, maybe 15 years ago. It was so many years ago. And she was just getting big, you know? She was at the, uh, the International Emmy Awards and she looked amazing. She had this gorgeous gown on and she smelled heavenly. I says, oh my God, Vivica, what are you wearing? That perfume is just knocking me down. I love it. What are you wearing? What was it? What was I it? don't know. You know, I don't remember the name of the perfume, but I do remember she had a dress on that was designed by a Canadian designer and she was lovely. I mean, you know, I really loved interviewing her. She was really good. I would have to say she's one of, one of the most glamorous women that I've interviewed. She's very glamorous. She is. She's, she's absolutely just very glamorous. You know, not, not all of them are I, glamorous. Yeah. So, um, but anyway, I wanted to talk a little bit more. Um, now you're working, you are working on and filming as one of your lead roles in the uh, now feature film, A Journey Told, playing Carol yep. Galvin. And that yep. is written by Rick Galvin, who I interviewed. Um, and he's, uh, he always has fashion shows during New York Fashion Week. And that's directed by Elizabeth White. Now, Tell us about this project that you're working with, with Rick Galvin, that you play his mother. Yes. Um, so it's an autobiographical film um, and um, it's Rick's story about, you know, what he went through with his mother feels and my stuff. So then um, I'm very grateful for, for her for so many things and for Rick for believing in me and giving me the role. 
um, you know, it's not out yet. So I, you know, I don't want to say too much about the story, but people know the story um, based on his foundation, based on his mother, based on his story. Um, and I think it's going to be a beautiful film. Uh, Elizabeth is an award-winning director also. So I'm oh, very yes. excited about, right. Yeah, I'm she very is. excited about working with her. So um, it sounds like, uh, you know, she, she does great work. And I think that, um, you know, just like any other character, I'm going to do my research and uh, but you do my best to feel. You haven't started filming yet, though, have you? Have you no, started no, 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 that, no, that was on hold because of the um, pandemic. And then also, it initially was a short, and my acting is this um, feature. I see, I you see. Know, um, so it'll film, yeah. But it's coming up, so I'm really excited about that. So I'm excited. Let me know about it because when we get closer to it, hopefully, you know, I could attend maybe the premiere or something. But tell my wonderful. audience, yeah. Now tell my audience. We're going to show. Um, I'm going to show this trailer of Sienna's uh, Sienna's Choice is the name, right, of the film? Yes. Okay. Yes. So I'm going to show. We're going to show the audience uh, a trailer of Sienna's Choice. Uh, right now, we'll be seeing it in a few minutes. You fight. Fight. If there's any chance of me fighting this, I'm going to figure it out. I will always come back to you, Kyle. I still have things to do. I was diagnosed in 2008. 2006. 2010. I was 32. I was 30. I was only 28 years old when I found out I had breast cancer. Last year, nearly 200,000 women in the United States were diagnosed with breast cancer. That means a woman in the U.S. is told she has breast cancer every two minutes. This video is two minutes long. Every woman on the planet is at risk for breast cancer. And that risk only increases if someone in your family has been diagnosed. So get checked. Check yourself. Perform routine breast exams at least once a month. It's easy. You can do it in the shower. If something doesn't feel right, it's up to you to find out what's wrong. Tell your doctor about any lumps or any unusual skin irritation, itching, or pain. Get regular mammograms starting by at least age 40 and every year after that. Breast cancer may not be preventable. But knowing the facts and knowing your body will increase your chances of finding any cancer early. Early detection means it's easier to treat. These are your sisters we're talking about. Mothers, daughters, friends, neighbors. Please, stay aware. Stay healthy. Stay alive. I survived breast cancer. I survived breast cancer. Sobreviví cancer en los senos. I survived breast cancer. I am still fighting breast cancer. Talk to your doctor. Get regular mammograms. And perform routine self-exams. It's as easy as taking a shower. So tell me, darling, where can we go to find out more information about you as an actress, a producer? Do you have a website? Yes, and I think the best way to keep in touch, I use Instagram for a lot of my acting things. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just Janelle Tana, J-A-N-E-L-T-A-N-N-A, -N -N -A, so at Janelle Tana. So if you go to my Instagram, you'll find my IMDb, which will link you to my website. So my website's a little outdated, so I would say Instagram, and then IMDb is the best way. Of I'm course, on IMDb too. is always the best way. <laughs> well, it was such a pleasure to talk to you so much. Um, I'm gonna, we're going to sign off, 
And right. I'm going to, I wish I was there to give you a pink champagne kiss. Oh, I love it. Thank you. <laughs> pink champagne kisses. Thank and you. as we say in show business, darlings, break a leg. No pun intended. <laughs> Thank you but so much for having me. Don't go away yet. We're going to chat. I'm going to close this interview and tell my audience, keep watching more of Cognac's Corner coming up. We'll be, ha be having doing more Zoom interviews and more shopping hauls. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, darlings. And I love you all. And pink champagne kisses. Hello, darlings. You've all heard of Marilyn Monroe. Some of you know Bridget Fardell. dressed to impress one of a kind girl I was brought into this world wrapped up in pearls I love to mingle though my husband reminds me I'm not single I meet and greet both the famous and the elite I ride in limousines drinking the finest champagne wearing fur dazzling diamond jewelry a girl can't complain Dining in the finest restaurants, eating the best caviar for free. And no matter how much I eat cognac, ooh, ooh. I said cognac, ooh, ooh, ooh. This has been a Crybaby Productions, darlings.